This video depicts topics of violence, murder, and death, and is not suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Saint Boniface, also known as the Apostle of the Germans, was an influential missionary and reformer in the early Middle Ages. Here's a brief biography of his life. Saint Boniface was born around 675 AD in an Anglo-Saxon kingdom of Wessex, England. His birth name was Winfred or Winfrith. He came to an, from a noble family and received his early education at the monastery in Exeter. He later joined the Benedictine monastery at Nurslin, near Winchester, where he or was ordained as a priest around 705 AD. Winfred became a respected teacher and scholar, contributing to the creation of the first Latin grammar in England. In 716 AD, Winfred set out on a missionary journey to Frisia, modern-day Netherlands, to convert the pagan Frisians to Christianity. However, his efforts were unsuccessful due to political and military conflicts. He returned to England, but was undeterred in his missionary calling. In 718 AD, Winfred traveled to Rome to seek the support of Pope Gregory II in his missionary work. The Pope gave him the new name of Boniface, which means doer of good, and commissioned him to evangelize the Germanic peoples in the Frankish Empire. Armed with his papal mandate, Boniface became his, began his mission excuse me, in the regions of Hesse and Thuringia. Boniface's missionary efforts were highly successful. He was famously known for failing his, the sacred oak tree dedicated to Thor, the donor of oak at Gishmar, demonstrating the powerlessness of the pagan gods and converted many of the local peoples to Christianity. He established his numerous churches, monasteries, and schools throughout Germany. In 732 AD, Pope Gregory III appointed Boniface as Archbishop of the Germans and later as Archbishop of Mainz, making him the chief overseer of the Christian mission in the region. Boniface played a crucial role in organizing the Frankish church, reforming the clergy, and promoting monasticism. He also established the important monasteries of Fulda in Hesse and Fritzar. Boniface maintained a close relationship with Carolingian rulers, particularly Charles Martel and his sons, Pippin the Short and Carloman. These rulers provided military and political support for Boniface's missionary activities and church reforms, which helped to consolidate the Christian faith and Roman Catholic Church's influence in their territories. Despite his advance in age, Boniface embarked on a final missionary journey to Frisia in 753 AD. He was determined to continue his efforts to convert the pagan Frisians. On June 5th, 754 AD, while preparing to confirm a group of converts near Docum Boniface, and his companions were attacked by a band of pagan Frisians. Refusing to defend himself, Boniface was martyred along with 52 of his followers. Saint Boniface's body was eventually taken to the monastery of Fulda, which he had founded, and he was buried there. Fulda became a major center of learning and pilgrimage in his honor. Boniface was canonized as a saint, and his feast day is celebrated on June 5th. Saint Boniface is remembered as a key figure in the Christianization of Germany and the reform of the Frankish Church. His life and work significantly shaped the religious landscape of medieval Europe. He is venerated as a saint of Germany and one of the great pioneers of Christian missionary work in Europe. 
The iconography of St. Boniface is rich and varied, reflecting his role as a missionary, reformer, and martyr. Throughout history, artists have depicted him with specific attributes and scenes that highlight key aspects of his life and work. Here is a brief description of St. Boniface's iconography, along with examples of artwork demonstrating it. St. Boniface is often depicted wearing the attire of a bishop, which includes a mitre, bishop's hat, a chasuble, a sleeveless outer vestment, and a pallium, a woolen band around the shoulders. These elements signify his ecclesiastical rank. He is also frequently showed, shown holding a book symbolizing his scholarly background and his dedication to spreading the Christian teaching. This can also represent scriptures or the reforms he instituted within the church. One of the most distinctive symbols of St. Boniface's is an axe or hatchet representing the legendary f felon of the Donar Ark. This act was a pivotal moment in his missionary work, symbolizing the triumph of Christianity over paganism. In some depictions, St. Boniface is shown with a palm branch, a traditional symbol of martyrdom, reflecting his death at the hands of pagan Frisians. The Felon of the Dona Arc. This is one of the most famous scenes associated with Saint Boniface. He is depicted chopping down the sacred oak tree dedicated to the pagan god Thor in Gizmar. This act demonstrated the superiority alleged of the Christian god and led the conversion of many locals. An example of this is the work called St. Boniface's Felon the Donor Arc, a 16th century painting by Martin de Vos, which captures this dramatic and significant moment. Many artworks show St. Boniface also preaching to the Germanic tribes, baptizing converts, or founding churches and monasteries. A fresco in the Abbey of Fulda depicting St. Boniface evangelizing the Germanic peoples illustrates his role as a minary and church founder. There also may be paintings or works with scenes of his martyrdom are also common, showing him and his companions being attacked by pagan Frisians. These often emphasize his calm acceptance of his passing and his faith. An example of this scene being depicted is the martyrdom of Saint Boniface, a painting by Dutch artist Adrian van der Veld, vividly portrays the violent end of his missionary efforts. Other works include stained glass windows. Numerous churches across Europe, particularly in Germany and England, feature stained glass windows depicting scenes from St. Boniface's life. These windows often highlight the felon of the Donner Oak and his martyrdom. For example, the stained glass windows in the Mainz Cathedral include scenes of his missionary work and his martyrdom, emphasizing his connection to the city and his role as its archbishop. There are obviously many statues of St. Boniface, excuse me, uh, which can also be found in many churches and cathedrals. These statues typically depict him in his bishop's vestments, holding a book and an axe. An example of this is the statue of St. Boniface in Fulda Cathedral, which portrays him with a serene expression, book in hand, and an axe at his side, symbolizing his scholarly work and his missionary achievements. There are also many illuminated manuscripts. These medieval manuscripts often include miniature illustrations of Saint, excuse me, of Saint Boniface, 
these are valuable for understanding how he is venerated and visually represented in early centuries. An example of this is the Codex Sangalensis, an illuminated manuscript from the Abbey of St. Gaul, which contains a detailed miniature of St. Boniface preaching. Other important symbolic elements is the oak tree, which often depicted in the background or is a part of the scene to remind viewers of the donor arc incident. Pagan idols are often included in the works. These images of pagan idols being destroyed or cast down appear in artworks depicted in Boniface, symbolizing the eradication of paganism. Finally, many followers and converts are also included in the works. His followers and converts are shown around him, emphasizing his role as a shepherd of the Christian flock. In conclusion, the iconography of St. Boniface is a testament to his enduring legacy as a pioneer and missionary and church reformer. Through epistle vestments, symbols of his martyrdom, and de de depictions of his pivotal moments, artists across the centuries have captured the essence of his life work from his stained glass windows and statues to paintings and manuscripts. These artworks continue to inspire and educate the faithful around the remarkable life of St. Boniface. St. Boniface, also known as the Apostle of the Germans, is credited with several miracles that played a significant role in his missionary work and the Christianization of Germanic tribes. These miracles were not only pivotal in converting many pagans to Christianity, but also served to strengthen the faith of the newly converted Christians. Here's a brief description of notable miracles attributed to St. Boniface. The Felon of the Donner Oak One of the most famous miracles associated with St. Boniface is the Felon of the Donner Oak, also known as Thor's Oak, at Geismar, modern-day Fritzal in Germany in 723 AD. This oak was sacred to the Germanic god Thor and is, its destruction was seen as an act of great defiance against paganism. It took place in Gismar near Fritzl, Germany in 723 AD. St. Boniface, accompanied by a group of his followers, decided to cut down the sacred oak to demonstrate the powerlessness of the pagan gods. As he struck the tree, a strong wind is said to have miraculously blown down the oak tree. This event led to the conversion of many locals who witnessed the miracles and saw it as a sign of the superiority of the Christian God. The Spring Site of the Donner Oak Following the felon of the Donner Oak, another miracle reportedly took place at the same site. According to tradition, a spring of fresh water began to flow from the spot of the oak what stood. This spring was seen as a divine blessing and it further convinced the local populace of the truth of Christianity. This also took place at Gismar near Fritzl in Germany shortly after 723 AD. The emergence of the spring was interpreted as a sign of God's favor and added sanctity to the site. A church was later built there, further solidifying the location as a place of Christian worship. The resurrected child in Mentz is another significant miracle attributed to St. Boniface, which occurred, of course, in Mentz, where he later became the Archbishop. According to the legend, Boniface resurrected a child who had passed away during his tenure as an archbishop between 745 and 754 AD. The child's parents, desperate and grieving, brought the lifeless body to St. Boniface, imploring him for help. Boniface prayed fervently 
over the child and then mira who then miraculously returned to life. This event greatly enhanced Boniface's reputation and reinforced the faith of the local Christian community. The protection of Fulda Abbey. Saint Boniface founded the monastery of Fulda in 744 AD which became one of the most important centers of learning and spirituality in the region. Several miracles are associated with early years of the abbey attributed to the intercession of Saint Boniface. This occurred in the mid 8th century in Fulda, Germany. One of the notable miracles involved in the protection of the abbey was the Maradin pagan tries. As the story goes, when the abbey was threatened by impending attack, Saint Boniface appeared in a vision to the monks, instructing them to pray and trust the divine protection. The attackers were subsequently driven away by a sudden and fierce storm, which was interpreted by the monks as a miraculous intervention of Saint Boniface. Throughout his missionary works, there were also many healing miracles, which were credited to Saint Boniface. These miracles often involved curing the sick, restoring sight to the blind, and other acts of divine healing, which helped to convert many pagans and bolster the faith of Christians. While preaching in Hesse, Boniface encountered a blind man who begged him for help. After praying over the man, and anointing his eyes with oils, the man's sight was miraculously restored. This event not only converted the man and his family, but also many who, others who witnessed the miracle. A sick child in Thuringia was suffering from several illnesses and was brought to Saint Boniface after praying and laying his hands on the child. The child was healed, leading to the conversion of several prominent local families. In another account, Saint Boniface was said to have performed the miracle similar to the biblical multiplication of loaves and fishing. This occurred in Baravia during one of his missionary travels during the early 8th century. While traveling with a group of missionaries, St. Boniface and his companions found themselves in a remote area with little food. After praying over the meager provisions they had, the food was miraculously multiplied, providing enough sustenance for everyone. This miracle strengthened the resolve and his faith of his followers and impressed the local inhabitants. The miracles attributed to St. Boniface played a crucial role in his missionary success and the establishment of Christianity in Germany. From the dramatic felon of the Donner Oak on to the resurrection of the child in Mintz, these miraculous events demonstrated the power of the Christian God over pagan deities and helped to convert many to the faith. His legacy of miracles continued to inspire and reinforce the faith of Christians along after his martyrdom in 754 AD. Saint Boniface, hailed as the Apostle of the Germans, was canonized as a saint in recognition of his tireless missionary work, church reforms, and martyrdom. Although the formal canonization process we recognize today were not fully developed until later medieval period, the veneration and recognition of Boniface as a saint followed a series of significant steps that reflected his widespread impact and the reverence in which he was held. Saint Boniface was martyred on June 5, 754 by a band of pagan friesen. His martyrdom was immediately seen as a testament to his faith and missionary zeal. His body initially buried at the site of his martyrdom, but due to local unrest, was soon moved. 
from Dokum Frisia, modern day Netherlands. Boniface's body was then transported to Fulda, a monastery he founded in 744 AD. The translation of his relic to Fulda was a significant event. Fulda quickly became a major center of pilgrimage and Boniface's grave became the center of veneration. The transfer was organized by his disciples, including his successor Lulus, later Saint Lulus, who became the first Archbishop of Mentz. Almost immediately, reports miracles attributed to Saint Boniface began to spread in Fulda and many parts of Germany. Pilgrims visited his tomb and many claimed to have experienced miraculous healings and divine interventions. The growing number of such reports bolstered his reputation and contributed to his veneration as a saint. While there was no formal canonization process as we understand it today, the actions taken by Lulus and other church leaders were critical. Lulus, a close disciple of Boniface, played a key role in promoting the veneration of Boniface. He compiled accounts of Boniface's miracles and life, which were disseminated to bolster his saintly reputation. By the early 9th century, the widespread veneration of Boniface and the reports of miracles reached Pope Gregory IV. The Pope formally acknowledged the sanctity of Saint Boniface, thereby granting him official recognition to the veneration practices that had already been established. This papal acknowledgement can be seen as an early form of canonization, led in official churches approval to the cult of Boniface. His feast day was formally established on June 5th, the date of his martyrdom, which was significant steps to the institutionalization of his veneration. Churches and monasteries began to celebrate this day with special masses, processions, and prayers in his honor. The monks of Fulda began a pivotal role in spreading the veneration of St. Boniface. They provided hagiographies such as Vita Bonifati, written by Willibald, which detailed his life, work, and miracles. The texts were distributed widely, further cementing his status as a saint across Christendom. In Fulda, a major pilgrimage site throughout the Middle Ages was dedicated to him. Pilgrims from across Europe visited the abbey to pray to uh, Boniface's tomb, seeking his intercession and blessing. The abbey became one of the most important religious center in the re region, largely due to its association with Boniface. In modern times, St. Boniface is officially recognized as a saint by the Roman Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox Church, and Anglican Communion. His legacy continues to be celebrated, and his feast day is still observed on June 5th. Some key individuals and places in his canonization process include St. Ludlus of Mentz, who was Boniface's disciple and the first Archbishop of Men, who played a cru crucial role in promoted Boniface's cult. There was also Pope Gregory IV, who has acknowledged Boniface's sanctity, given formal recognition to his veneration. The monks of Fulda, who preserved and spread Boniface's legacy throughout hagiographies and the maintenance of his shrine. And of course, there was the Falta Abbey itself, which is the primary site associated with Boniface's relics and a major center of pilgrimage.
In conclusion, the canonization process of St. Boniface was a gradual process that reflected the early medieval church's practices of recognizing sanctity through local veneration, miracles, and papal acknowledgement. His immediate veneration following his martyrdom, the translation of his relics to Fulda, and the widespread reports of miracles contributed to his recognition as a saint. The efforts of his disciples, especially Lulus, and the official acknowledgement by Pope Gregory IV played a pivotal role in his canonization. Today, St. Boniface is remembered and honored as a fundamental figure in the Christianization of Germany and the, as a martyr of the faith.